herzlich willkommen. Hello everyone, welcome to Oxpoon, a techno magazine with Wolfgang Rudel. Hello everyone, welcome to Oxpoon. I would like to try today to look at a little behind what our wind is and to determine how much wind is blowing or how much wind is blowing. There are many technical terms for this, but the background to it, or how it all started, years ago people put their finger in their mouths, made it wet and held it up. And with this you could determine on which side it is cold. And from this direction the wind came from. This principle is used today by electrical when you want to measure the wind. And you could, on the speed that the finger got colder, so roughly estimate how strong the wind is. You have noticed it otherwise, but okay. These ancient toys here like this, a wind wheel, you can also determine on the speed also how strong the wind is blowing. But long before something like this, Archimedes had invented a wind plate, or thought of it, depending how you want to call it, it was simply on a horizontal rod, hung on a light plate, and I have tried to build it with paper and a notebook holder, this thing here. And when I turn on my ventilator behind it, we can see it moves. And when I turn it off, it goes back to the original position. And depending on how strongly it goes up, you could see how strong the wind is. You put a scale behind it and made the scale with arbitrary wind speeds labeled or with wind strengths and that was all. So Archimedes was a clever person when you think about it, but the real numerical evaluable of the wind speed and maybe the volume of the air which goes through a channel everywhere where ventilation is needed. That is a little harder. And then there was sometimes, because so a wind wheel, I can show you that as well. A wind wheel is nice and makes fun. And now it turns. But when I turn the wind wheel to a little to the side, it stops turning. Why? Because it isn't for this purpose thought for. The inflow and air runs past and pushes from below and above almost simultaneously. I have to be in the right direction. It is very strongly direction dependent. And that is a large disadvantage. Not as a child's toy, but when I want to use it technically. And then there was something like this. I took an old microphone stand with a nail in it and a wing wheel an anemometer like I have in my garden. So put it onto here and as you can see it turns. What is the difference? Here with a cup anemometer it doesn't matter if the winds come from here or from here. It always turns at the same speed. When the wind has the same strength. I can show you. We turn it on. And it turns. We have to naturally somehow this speed measure. How do you do that? There are lots of possibilities. For one you can put a light barrier somewhere onto it and by every turn or half turn or quarter turn when it was interrupted counts a small calculator or something up and over the time and you can say how many turns and then calculate which wind speed, how quickly this anemometer turns. This anemometer I can read differently here. I will let you look inside in a moment. I can't get it quickly back onto the nail. There's a small magnet in it. And when I go now with my hollow generator, Then you can hear, every time the magnet passes, it peeps. And that is really simple. I let the thing turn and get for every revolution a number. 
Quite earlier, you had a small generator on it to produce electricity for a larger proportion of electricity, but you had naturally took the power away from the wind wheel when you hadn't measured the revolutions. And that is why something like this is ideal. So now watch out, we go on now on to full power. And as you can hear, the peak frequency goes up. The anemometer turns quicker. And when I turn one off, it goes back down. And when I turn the second one off, it stops eventually. So, I promised I would let you look inside. Here at this point here, there is a small magnet built in. And when I go to it with the whole generator, you can see the LED lights up. And it peeps. So you can the wind speed from a revolution derive. There are also other methods. Pressure, for example. When you measure in a plane, you don't have any wheels to measure the air which turns. They are pulled in. For they, this, they have a jam tube, for example. Nowadays, they do it with GPS and similar things. And such things can be used in a normal technology. There are very interesting things. There are newer things. I can, for example, what I did with my finger, for example, to cool down also with a wire or with a metal plate, which I heat up and through wind, which is blown in, cooled down. And this wire changes its resistance and when I send a constant current through it, the resistance changes. Or I have constant resistance or the current changes. From this I can derive the wind speed. I can do it with ultra shell. Ultra shell you might think, how does that work? Very simple. Carried is shell from air or from the medium, or from water, wood and so forth. And when this medium moves, then the shell speed seems to be higher. When you think there are lots of films where any people are walking, a gangster or someone on top of a train wagon on the roof because they want to run away, and when they run in the direction of travel, it is clear they are quicker than a train, because they come to the front. And exactly the same with ultra shell. When ultra shell is transported in the wind direction, it is apparently quicker. And this you can measure. There are also naturally other ultra shell procedures that in a reflection chamber standing waves or transversal waves are generated and these bring into an interference means a phase shift measures. There are also laser devices where two lasers are crossed and then interference is generated very many. But in a practice today what is relative, inexpensive and very reliable, I have had a look at closer. An anemometer from PCA, the VA20. That is what I have here in my hand. Very handy and a nice handle, a large display, light and easy to use. And I will show it simply. When I turn it on, it starts with a self-test like most of the devices. I have different display modes which I can set. At the moment I have in the upper display the airspeed in meters per second and in the bottom the room temperature. And now I will just blow it on a bit and look at the display. And as you can see by very low airspeed it starts. So in principle from 0.2 meters per second and it goes up to 30 meters per second. I can also put an automatic blower behind it. So I don't lose my breath so much. And when I look at it, the speed goes up, but so much doesn't do a small USB fan. So now we have to say for what do you use it for? You have in many areas the need to know is the airflow rate enough. Quite early, also in mines, you had to have it 
to see whether the ventilation works. It's enough air from outside to downside inside pumped enough in hospitals or clinics in air conditioning to have to be checked. You have the problem when filters are blocked that the air current is not enough and also the volume, the amount of which is transported. It is naturally with this li a little hard, with this you can very universally everything and anywhere measure, but when I have a channel, an air channel, and I want to measure it, there is with this VA20 in a set alone or in the set, there is a sort of funnel with it. This is what it looks like. And what I think is awesome, when I stick it onto it, it is recognized. And it's automatically switched. And it also recognizes which funnel it is. So now I can put it in front of my ventilation duct, because here at the front, when I press on it, there is a sealing lip, so that no outside air comes in, and then I get an exact measurement. So now we can take it back off. There are naturally other larger channels, square ones. We can see here so. That's what this looks like. And when I stick it on here, then you can see that it has recognized it again. And now with a different symbol, a square one. So, a device with which you can work with very universally, easy to use, although there are lots of setting possibilities. But to go through all of them is a little difficult. You can see a backlighted display. I can set units, imperial and metric units, different sizes. I can save data. Can different lines change with separate displays? I also have the possibility from a so-called funnel when I want to put in the measurements. I can put in the diameter of round ventilation ducts and I can put in the side lengths by square ventilation ducts and so forth. So a device which I haven't had in my hands before but I'm greatly surprised that it is so flexible. And that is, in the usage, very simple. That even I can do it. A measuring device, which in many areas, which in this indispensable is, where you can air streams, air amounts determine, and where you must very easily, very quickly do. And portable, there are naturally other things which are built in where air amount measurement is needed, but this device does it in principle as well. A device is a warning for wind speeds. I have here from PC and is the WSAC50. This is what it looks like and it's casing and a display and a few user buttons. But before I turn it on, I want to let you have a look inside. Because you must, when you want to use it, you have to open it for one to connect the power. It is available in different versions for 230 volt and 12 and 24 volt. And there is also a version wireless. It is the same type description, only a few more letters to it. Network connection on this side. We have here six connection clamps. There are potentially three relay outs. There are two changes with 10 amp resilient by 230 volts. So it is universal. And what for two relays? I will show you that in a minute running. But first of all, we have to close it. And then we have to turn on the power naturally. So and now the self test comes. Oh yes, it starts properly to alarm. You have to naturally attach a sensor. I can attach different sensor. I've brought one with me. It is automatically recognized. The device knots itself. It is now ready to use. 
We get shown no wind speed. That is logical. I will take now here my wind power plant. So, an anemometer. Oh, by the way, since 1842, there are the Benjamin Behren, an Englishman, had registered the patent, and three years later such cup anemometers or spoon anemometers, or whatever, or sphere anemometers produced in series. Just by the way. So I turn on my fan, and then the anemometer turns. In the display we can see I have the pre-alarm set by 1 meter per second. Untypical, okay. But a lot more wind I do not want in the studio. The alarm is by 2 meters triggered that I have set. For this I have to turn on my second fan. One alone cannot do it. So now he must... 1.6, 1.7, 1 1.8, 1 so, and now you can see and hear the full alarm is reached, the LED turns on, maybe you also heard the relay maker click, that means you can now something switch alert someone, signal, something, so fan turn off, the speed goes down, and below one, the pre-alarm goes away, very simple, and very secure, a very large display, and we have also here many possibilities. I must to parameterize it, put three times the eight into it. So the next one again. And the next one again. So now I am in the menu. That means I can go back out, I can go into the areas, S1, that is the pre-alarm, S2 is the main alarm, when I go into it, I said I had 2 meters per second, you can see then 2 meters per second, I can also go up to 99 meters per second set, now I am at the 52, we won't reach that here in the studio, even a digit, so exactly I can set it. So a measuring device, surely for professional usage, what is static, somewhere built in, which continuously monitors the wind speed, can give a pre-alarm by a certain speed, which is freely to be configured, and subsequently the main alarm triggers when the maximum wind speed is reached which devices it triggers is your decision if a signal is triggered or if you want to shut some windows or retract aero mass or whatever it is free and universal usable and as I said this device the PC WSAC 50 and a few digits behind you can acquire in different versions with or without a RS-485 interface, wireless, or with a cable, however you want. One of the principles of airspeed measurement and to measure air amount is by using a stave pipe. Have a look at it, that is what it looks like. It has a pipe and it has here at the top a defined opening. It is all very exact processed so that you get decent results. That means the length of the pipe and everything has to be precisely matched. And, and here at the bottom, here at this spot, there are two connections. And one of the connections I've already put a hose onto. The second one I'll put later a hose onto. And the other end of the hose goes into my measuring device. This is what it looks like, a hand device but it has on the reverse side a thread, so I can screw it to a tripod when I want to fix it somewhere. And that is all really. Now I stick it on here at the top, on the right side naturally. Turn the device on, and after a short self-test, you can see that I get a display 
and above is the temperature displayed below the te display for the pressure that is in the Pascal when now I now put pressure onto it here I blow into my hand I don't want to spit into it you can see that it reacts very quickly so that was pressure when I want to measure speed I need a second tube that is this one the black one so that I don't mix them up this is also put on up here and this comes here onto the side connection it has to be naturally sealed so it is stiff to shove it on but we have it on and I won't put it totally on because I have to take it back off later give back the loan device the operation is easy and simple I have a setup button can hear the units set what I want different types sleep mode as well and so forth it is basically self-explainable I use a manual you don't need principally and here we have the possibility the measured values at a touch of a button to save we have the possibility to call up minimum and maximum call up average and here we can change the display which value I want shown very interesting I think is that the software is delivered with it and a USB cable so that all of this data I can display on my computer I'd like to show you that too because long term savings and direct savings is very interesting so and now we can hear on the screen see that it is recognized straight away and to the left it has changed and it shows me exactly what is on the display of the device I can hold it next to it and see if we can see that with the camera so you can see those are the same values which are really live updated and when I start a measurement in the software it is as simple as by every recorder with one button I want to know the sample rate and that was all now the recording is running and when I now try my blowing again it is naturally not typical such a measurement normally you hold this pipe somewhere in a flow channel somewhere where air flows where the pressure or the speed I want to measure and where I want to measure the volume how much air is transported temperature and similar things are naturally with it but as you can see it strikes it shows something when that isn't high resolution enough so now you can see this area is enlarged that is naturally not everything when I want to save it as a graph I can save it somewhere but I can also save these measured results in a file so that I can read it later with a spreadsheet not only that I can save every measured line and can call them up later when I say here open and I get myself a measured line which was yesterday the day before or from another time go to here and get this measured line old one so to say shown and that what I said before when I save it in a text format get it back in a spreadsheet and as you can see those are the values which have been saved with timestamp naturally and I can how I will evaluate use or whatever and can use them to steer or for similar things used so a measuring device which is very flexible in which I come into every small opening where I can measure flow conditions and pressure conditions temperature and with this I can do nearly everything I want as with a different anemometer because that counts to other anemometers because they are too large for what I want
So, to summarize, a hand device for flexible and mobile usage, battery powered, is that here an animator with a wing wheel? In many areas configurable and settable, it is called the VA20, and it is also delivered as a set. The VA20 set with these two funnels, the square one and the round one, to couple better to the airstreams. And in the middle I have the WSAC50, a stationary device which you can receive in different versions. For one in a 230 volt power supply, 12 volt, 24 volt, and it's also available as a wireless version, a device with which you can connect different sensors and with two alarm settings and two potential relay outs. And at last we have this stave pipe device with which you can go into the smaller holes where you can do measurements where the other devices do not go into. And it has the description HVAC2, a device which falls out of the roll surely against the other devices, but in special usage very helpful. So that's all. I wish that you that you never come to a stave pipe in a jam. And wish you well until the next time. Goodbye.